Every field has a turning point, a moment when everything you thought you understood collapses and a new way of thinking takes over. For mathematics, that moment came from a man almost no one saw coming. He didn't invent calculus. He didn't invent limits. He didn't invent infinite series. He did something far more dangerous. He proved that none of them were truly understood. With definitions so precise they cut through intuition, he forced infinity to obey rules, turned calculus from guesswork into science, and built the foundations every modern mathematician now stands on. This is the legacy of Karl Weierstrass, the genius who rebuilt mathematical reality from the inside out. In the quiet fields of Westphalia, long before he reshaped the foundations of mathematics, a young boy walks alone with a stick, sketching numbers in the soil. Not equations, just possibilities. The village around him knows routine, repetition, and ritual. But inside this child, a different rhythm stirs. A rhythm built not from faith or tradition, but from the silent precision of patterns. Karl Weierstrass grows up between winter winds and wooden parish doors, a shy child with an uncanny instinct for arithmetic. His world is small, but his curiosity is not. Yet curiosity alone is never enough, not in 19th century Prussia, where the path of a son is carved not by passion, but by duty. And so, in 1834, Karl enters the University of Bonn, not to study mathematics, the language he breathes, but to train for a life in administration, a life chosen for him. Lecture halls echo with the drudgery of law, finance, bureaucracy, none of it touches him, none of it feels real. But hidden in the shadows of his dormitory room, he discovers the works of Euler, Lagrange, Laplace, and something inside him finally awakens. As daylight fades, Karl disappears into pages the way others disappear into dreams. He studies alone, feverishly, recklessly, ignoring lectures, drifting through the university like a ghost with a secret. The world outside is full of noise, the clash of fencing blades, the raucous chants of the Franconia Corps, the distractions of student life. But inside him grows a quiet obsession. Mathematics becomes not a subject, but a refuge, a forbidden one. Inevitably, the facade cracks, grades collapse, examiners frown, and the young man who might have conquered mathematics is instead dismissed as a failure in the very field he never wanted. He leaves Bonn with no degree, no prospects, and a disappointed father waiting at home. But defeat is not the end of his story. It is the beginning. In Münster, in a quiet academy far removed from the ambitions of cities, Karl meets Christoph Gutermann, a mathematician of sharp insight and sharper instinct. Gutermann sees what others have missed. He recognizes the rare mind before him and whispers a truth the world has not yet heard. This student understands mathematics more deeply than any I have taught. And with that single recognition, the door opens. The uncertainty, the failure, the detours, everything points toward one path. Karl Weierstrass completes his training as a schoolteacher, but carries within him something far greater, the spark that will soon rekindle the entire structure of modern mathematics. The world forgets him, but Karl Weierstrass does not forget himself. In the remote towns of Prussia, Deutschkrona, Brownsburg, he steps into classrooms not as a scholar, but as a school teacher. His days are filled with Latin, geography, German grammar, even physical education. A man born for mathematics is buried under the weight of routine. Yet every evening, when the halls grow silent and the lamps burn low, one window glows. Inside sits Weierstrass, hunched over a desk, 
pushing his mind far beyond the boundaries of these provincial walls. While the world sleeps, he writes, he thinks, he struggles with questions unanswered for decades. In that isolation, he carves mathematics into something new. He publishes his earliest masterpieces not in journals, not in academies, but in school reports, documents destined to be shelved, stacked, and quickly forgotten. His ideas on elliptic functions and analysis circulate only among principals and local inspectors. A genius writing into the void. There is no applause, no recognition, just silence. And the slow burn of ambition. But brilliance never blossoms without a price. The workload grows heavier, the nights grow longer, and his health begins to crumble. His legs weaken, his energy drains. Doctors warn him to rest, advice he cannot, will not obey. Because the mathematics calling him is louder than the pain consuming him. And then, in 1854, after years of obscurity, he writes a paper that does not fail. A paper too sharp, too precise, too revolutionary to remain hidden. Abhandlungen zur Theorie der Abelschen Funktionen, a treatise that takes the mysteries of abelian functions and unravels them with unprecedented clarity. When this manuscript reaches Berlin, shockwaves ripple through the academic world. Scholars whisper, who is this man? Where did he come from? How could a school teacher produce work of such extraordinary depth? From the shadows of forgotten towns, Karl Weierstrass has fired a flare into the mathematical sky, one bright enough to be seen in every major academy of Europe. Berlin, the beating heart of intellectual Europe, a city where theories rise, ideas clash, and reputations are forged in fire. And into this arena steps Karl Weierstrass, no longer a forgotten school teacher, but a mathematician whose insight has arrived like a thunderbolt. He walks into the University of Berlin quietly, but within weeks, his lectures become the most coveted in Europe. Students gather long before dawn. They crowd stairwells, windowsills, even stand outside doors just to hear him speak because the man they call the school teacher from nowhere is doing something no one has ever attempted. He is rebuilding mathematics itself. When Weierstrass takes the chalk, something extraordinary happens. He defines the limit, not by intuition, not by geometric hand-waving, but with the razor-sharp precision of epsilon and delta. A definition so exact, so unbreakable, that it becomes the foundation of modern calculus, a tool to separate truth from illusion, a new language for certainty. Then he turns to infinite series. In a world still uneasy with infinite processes, he introduces uniform convergence, a concept that stabilizes the entire structure of mathematical analysis. No more contradictions, no more paradoxes, just clarity where chaos once stood. Next, he builds analytic functions from the ground up using power series, not as a technique, but as a fundamental truth. In his hands, every analytic function becomes an infinite series, every behavior predictable, every property provable. And then, the shockwave. He unveils a function so strange that mathematicians doubt their own intuition, a curve that is continuous everywhere, yet differentiable nowhere. A function that flows without breaking, but has no tangent at any point. A contradiction to centuries of expectation, brought to life by the stroke of his chalk. The world calls it the Weierstrass function, a monument to how reality can be continuous, yet impossibly wild. And as if this was not enough, he reaches deeper into the fabric of the complex plane. He declares that every entire function, no matter how complicated, can be written as an infinite product of its zeros. 
This becomes the Weierstrass factorized theorem, a result that astonishes even the greatest analytical minds of Europe. His classroom ignites. Hermann Schwartz scribbles furiously. Gusta Mittag Leffler studies with awe. And Sofia Kovalevskaya, glowing with conviction, later writes, I owe everything to Weierstrass. The Weierstrass school forms, an intellectual movement built on rigor, precision, and the belief that mathematics must rest on foundations that can never crack. His disciples carry his ideas to Scandinavia, Russia, France, and beyond. Through them, the world learns to prove rather than assume, to define rather than imagine. Yet even as his theories reshape the mathematical universe, his body falters. His legs fail, crutches echo through Berlin's corridors. But he continues, teaching seated, speaking softly but with undeniable force. Students watch a man whose physical strength fades even as his intellectual power reaches its peak. In 1864, the transformation becomes official. The former school teacher is named Full Professor of Mathematics at Berlin, the highest academic honor of the empire. Not because of prestige, not because of lineage, but because he has rebuilt the entire discipline with his own hands. In his later years, Berlin becomes a quieter city for Karl Weierstrass. The lecture halls still stand, the chalkboards still gleam, but the man who once commanded them now moves through life with careful, deliberate steps. His legs, once weakened, now feel almost paralyzed. His hands tremble, his breath comes slower. Yet his mind, his mind remains astonishingly clear. He may no longer climb the steps to the University of Berlin, but the world climbs to him. Former students, now professors, directors of journals, builders of institutions, knock on his door with manuscripts in hand, seeking guidance from the master whose precision reshaped their scientific DNA. Letters arrive from Paris, Stockholm, St. Petersburg, Cambridge. Scholars ask questions, debate theories, and weave their thoughts around a man who can no longer walk unaided, but who still thinks with unbroken sharpness. It is here, in the quiet of his Berlin apartment, that his influence becomes global. Throughout his later years, honors poured in with a force that seemed almost disproportionate to the quiet, retiring man who received them. He was awarded the Order of the Red Eagle, second class with oak leaves, in 1887, one of Prussia's highest state distinctions, while universities across Europe recognized his influence with honorary doctorates, Göttingen and Königsberg in 1864, and Helsinki in 1869. The great academies of Europe opened their doors to him. He was elected a corresponding member of the Académie des Sciences in Paris, 1880, a foreign member of the Royal Society of London, 1885, and a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, 1883, while the Berlin Academy of Sciences elevated him to full membership that same year. But even the greatest minds cannot outrun time. By the winter of 1897, Karl Weierstrass grows weaker. His world narrows to a circle of devoted students and the quiet hum of memory. On the morning of February 19th, the universe loses one of its most disciplined architects. A life defined by rigor, by logic, by relentless pursuit of truth, comes to its final stillness. He is laid to rest in the altar St. Matthias Kirchhoff, among artists, thinkers, and rebels. A fitting place for a man who did not follow the path he was given, but carved the one he deserved. And yet, his story does not end here. Look into any modern textbook on real analysis. Watch a student struggle through an epsilon delta proof. Witness a physicist working with power series, a computer scientist reasoning about limits, a mathematician exploring complex functions. In every symbol, every definition, every rigorous argument, there is a trace of Weierstrass. 
his fingerprint on the very structure of mathematical thought. As David Hilbert would later say, paying homage to the man whose precision changed everything, Weierstrass stands at the foundation of all modern analysis. From forgotten reports in provincial schools to the bedrock of contemporary mathematics, Karl Weierstrass did more than teach, more than discover. He redefined what it means to know.